Hello there, it's Jay here from Jay's Vintage Junk and uh, today we're back on with the old um, Commodore C16s and um, the good news is that I have managed to make some progress um, unfortunately I didn't film it, I was just um, tinkering about the other night and um, I'll just uh, put you up onto the screen Oops, I better move them cables or she's just going to be able to see a load of cables in the shot, aren't you? Can you see that? Okay now, yeah, good enough you can see my screen there. Anyway, if I flick the old um, C16 board on, there we go. That's working. Well, at least it's working, isn't it? It will show a, uh, it will show a screen. Um, what I found the issue was, and I did kind of have an idea it may be um, something to do with that. It was the, uh, it was the RAM. Basically, what I ended up doing, I'll switch that off for the time being. What I ended up doing, ooh, let's get you back down there, was I pulled all the RAM off all, um, well, one of them had the RAM missing anyway, um, but the three boards that we've been concentrating on, um, I pulled all the, uh, four, uh, what is it now, it's, um, is it 416, yeah, it's 41, um, 416 RAM ICs, they're uh, like I said, the 16K um, by 4 bit, two of them to give you your 8 bits. And uh, I, pulled, I pulled them off all three boards, so I had six RAM chips. Now I must admit, the first board I started on, which was um, actually this board, I started doing it the good old fashioned way. I got my, uh, I got the soldering iron out, I got the uh, solder sucker out and I took the chips out like that and to take out them two ICs took me probably best part of an hour these boards are not nice to work on um, I got most of them free fairly easily but the ground planes um, that the 5 volt comes on especially on that IC there are huge they are really large and um, even with my bigger iron, uh, I had to give up using my little um, Antex there, and even with my uh, this horrible thing, um, I really, really struggled to get the ICs out. Because uh, obviously, I, I could have done it um, the easy way; I could have cut them out. But I wanted to um, ascertain what was actually faulty, whether it was the RAM. It's all very well and good cutting um, ICs out and just replacing them, but doing that, you can end up basically destroying a load of very good ICs and yes you can still get these but um, I'd rather if I can save an IC and reuse it then obviously I'd rather do that now I will freely admit that one of the ICs on this board actually it actually broke I've got it here now I have a feeling that this was the fault on at least on this board because I was not I was not being like mad with it or anything. I literally got all the solder off from round it. I got my little um, probe, which I always use for uh, lifting ICs, and I literally just put it under and just pulled to test. Hardly, in fact, it was that way around, like that. And I literally just put that under and just give it a tiny, tiniest of little touches to test. And as soon as I tried lifting up on it, the, the, I mean, the IC was loose. Um, you could actually see it, you could move all the legs, it was loose. It just needed that little bit of a, a little bit of help to get, start getting it out of the holes. And literally as soon as I give it some of that, it cracked and one leg just broke off. And the IC broke right along. So I have a feeling that that's actually what was faulty on this board, that particular, that particular RAM IC there. Anyway, so I got that um, I got that off. The other one came off, uh, which was in that position, came off fairly. You know, well, I wouldn't say fairly easy. It was still a pain in the ass to get off, but um, that came off without damage. I then went to my other technique, and I uh, basically for the other two boards, I used the old um, hot air technique. I've shown this technique before. Like I said, it's it's not a technique that I would recommend someone just go out and try on their nice vintage um, circuit board, it's a technique you need to practice on scrap. But, well you can see here, I've not lifted a pad, I've not damaged the boards, I've still got to clean the um, holes up out of these two, I've not done anything with these two yet, but um, I was able to get all four 
ram ICs out of there unscathed without doing any damage to the boards, the pads or anything and it took me about five minutes. So it is a technique you know that can, uh, can work to your advantage. Anyway once I've got all six ram ICs, well I say call it five ram ICs seeing uh, there ain't exactly much point in testing that one is there? <laughs> I mean that's uh, that one is um, that's past it. I'll throw that in the bin now. There's no point having it. Actually, no, I won't throw that in the bin um, just yet. I will keep that around for a minute because I might be able to use that. Um, so basically, like I say, I got um, the five Ram ICs out. Um, what I did, I used this little piece of equipment I've got over here. I'll just spin you around to it and bring you down. What we've got here, now I've shown this in another video when I first got it. I've not had it for very long. This is um, an ICE um, Speedmaster 1000, and basically, it's um, an EEPROM programmer on steroids. Uh, it's not just an EEPROM programmer. Um, it does many, many things. It's actually a fantastic piece of equipment. I am over the moon to actually get hold of this thing. It will program EEPROMs. I think it can program PALs and GALs as well. But the most interesting thing about it is it can actually test many different types of um, IC used in um, these old computers. It can test the old 74 series Logic ICs. It can test um, SRAM. And it can test DRAM. So, uh, I'll just give you a quick demo of this unit. And um, Basically, I couldn't... This unit... Uh, although it will test everything, um, there isn't actually a profile set up in it at the moment to test um, to test these DRAM, these um, DRAMs, these what is it now? It's a double four one six, the ones that we're dealing with. It is set up, however, to um, test the four four sixty fours, which is basically the uh, the sixty four K by four, rather than the sixteen K by four that we've got here. So, what I did, is I did a bit of cap comparisons, basically. Let me get the software up and running, and I'll show you. I'll get onto the old laptop. And just type... This is very old. Um, this is basically the first iteration, iteration of um, this machine. There are later ones which actually have... Uh, they, they work in a different way, basically, internally. Um, this one we are limited to the original MS-DOS um, software for it, which isn't a problem. I have managed to find all the software I need for it, some very very helpful guys on um, the Vintage Radio forum, um, dug through, some which have been obviously development engineers back in the 80s and 90s, dug through their archives and actually managed to find me the software for this thing. Um, I did actually, then after they'd done all that, I did actually find the disc for it with that massive computer lot of stuff that this came with. But anyway, um, this is the basic software. I mean, this software, it's dated 1992, so you can, you know, you can see the uh, date. Even the computer I've got it running on here is a bit um, modern for it, but it works fine. It runs Windows 98, which is set up basically to boot to MS-DOS. And as you can see here, we've got um, our library, so we've got 7400 series. Um, 4000 series. Now use is interesting because basically you can create your own profiles for um, ICs using this thing. It's something I've not looked into at all myself yet but um, you can basically design a test for an IC this and um, write it as a new test and it will be able to then test that bit, that type of IC providing it, you know, it's not something um, out of the ordinary. And that's what I will do with the uh, DRAM library on this for testing these um, the uh, 4416s. Uh, I'll basically, what I'll pr try and do is take the profile for a um, 4464 and modify it. I think I can do this so it will be able to properly test the uh, 4416s. But like I said, I didn't have that at the moment. So I thought I'd um, see what I could do. Anyway, let's go, uh, let's go down to the um, DRAM library on here. We'll switch on. And then it gives you some, inf some information. DRAM's a position with pin 1 in the pin 1 of the ZIF socket. So basically, pin 1 to pin 1 on there. Which is different, actually, if you're um, testing SRAMs. SRAMs, it's the other way around. But um, I'll, I'll test some good RAMs and I'll show you what, um, I'll show you what it does. 
so we can press a key there anyway because we know that and we can select a device hopefully let me see if I can uh, just zoom you in a bit on the actual software so you can possibly see this better I think you can see that okay can't you let me try and bring you in a little bit more whoops yeah I think you can probably see that you can see where it says select a device up there anyway so let's select a device and it gives us basically all the different DRAMs that the profiles are set up for in the software. So we can test a 64K by one, uh, which is basically it's basically um, these. It's what you find in your C64 in your old breadbin C64s. It's what you find in um, your Atari um, 800s and things like that. You use eight of them to give you 64K of RAM. And we'll throw one of them in here. Like that. So if you can uh you can have a look here. So all we've done, literally, as you can see there, it's just uh I don't know if you can make that out very well, but it's there. Pin one of the ICs up to pin one there on the uh tester. Let's bring you over onto here again. So we can select that. And then we can test the device. So it, if you see, um, performs um, an exhaustive wa uh, walking of ones and walking of zero bit test. So basically, it it fills it with um, zeros and it fills it with ones and it looks at um, whether at what it's sending and what it's getting back are the same thing and it can tell you whether the RAM's working or not. So um, we will go down from select a device to test the device. And if I just press um, test now. It says check device position and selection. So perhaps we haven't put that. In fact, we haven't. We've put that chip in wrong. Let me just move it up one. It what out is also a good thing is it won't let you damage a chip in here. You know, if you put a chip in wrong, it'll tell you. Anyway, let's try it again. Press a key. Test again. Test device. And if you look there, basically it marched all ones through up to 64k it marched all the zeros through and um, the RAM is okay right so what do we need to do so let's try and test a 4464 this is um 64k by 4 bits oops where where are you there you are let's, let's come on focus can you focus on that you've seen these before oops there we go um, 64k, um, like I said, 64k by 4 bits, so 4464. Um, so this is the 64, this is 64k version of the 16k um, chips that are out of the um, C16. Incidentally, um, you can plug these straight into a C16. I would not recommend it long term because there's some address lines tied to 5 volts and you just throw them in. But if you didn't have any working, non-working um, 4416s and you just wanted to do a quick test you could stick to um, 4464s in and it would fire up but it would fire up as a 16k machine still I wouldn't like I say I would not run it like that because of um, is that in the right place yeah because of some issues with um, some of the address lines being tied to 5 volts but anyway um, let's again well let's select the device and um, this time we want 64k by 4 so we uh, go down to 64k by 4 and it even tells us that that's an 18 pin device rather than a 16 pin device um, again press enter we can then test the device and if you look there it's walking through it takes a little bit longer obviously because um, there's more to test but there you go RAM is ok press a key so let's press a key now the only problem we've got, as I've mentioned before, is when we go to select, there is no 16k by 4 on that list. So what I thought was, I wonder what will happen if we test a, um, a 16k by 4 in it. It's going to fail, but is it going to fail in a way that we can actually perhaps still use this test to ascertain whether they're good or not? And I had a rummage around and I found one that I knew was alright. Um, I think the it was actually I've used one already to repair another computer unfortunately but um, in here we had one known definitely known good for one, uh, 4416 there that's actually out of that old Atari 600 that I did the RAM upgrade on um, quite a while back now um, I, obviously I kept the two um, 4416's out of that 
I do remember I have used one already in a uh, repair for somebody, but uh, I have one known good 4416 here. So what I thought was, I'll test that in this tester and I'll find out what the error, error is. So I stuck that in. And we set it up to um, 64k by 4, like that. And we did a RAM test on it. Test device. Well, we know it's going to fail, but the RAM is bad. Because it tested up to 00100H, and it's expected 0001, you know, red 1111. And I think the reason that is, it's basically it's counted up to the 16k, and it's tried counting more, and it can't do. So I thought, right, I've got a good um, baseline there. So what I did then, is I took all the RAM chips, that I'd um, put that five RAM chips that I'd previously removed from the C16s, and I ran them through exactly the same test. Now, I've got one of the Duff ones here, and if I put that in, like that, and we um, test device, if you look, it just comes up, check um, device position and selection. Now that is definitely, uh, oh actually no, I've got that wrong. There we go. It should do the same thing as well. Yeah, uh, check device position and selection, and that is um, right in the um, socket this time. Basically, um, it's not working at all, it's just refusing to test the device. And I went through all the RAM ICs like that. And basically, doing that, I managed to find... I think is it two out of the five which actually they give the same er they give the same error at exactly the same point as that known um, good tested one there so with that in mind I fitted two of them to the C16 board and as I've um, just shown it does now. Just uh, ignore the bit of flicker in there. That is pure this crappy uh, monitor that I'm using. But as you can see, it does work now. So what I thought I'd do now is we will um, see if we can load some software on it. I haven't. This is literally as far as I've gone so far. We haven't tested um, the keyboard interface on this yet. I've not tried loading anything since I've done the uh, since I've got it working again with the um, SD to IEC. So um, I thought we'd have a quick look at that, see if we can um, perhaps get it working with the SD to IEC, and um, hopefully we can take it from there. What I'll do then is I will fit some um, IC sockets to the other two um, C16 boards that I've got. I think I might might just have enough sockets left to do both boards. And we can test them with these two No, Basically, we now know we've got a good set of chips here. We know we've got some good RAM. We've got a good PLA, or at least a working PLA. We've got good ROMs. We've got a working TED, and we've got a working CPU. So we've got all the main basic components now tested. We know that they basically work. From that, we can then try on the other two boards. I'm pretty sure with the amount of failed RAM that I'd found, that probably uh, them other two boards, once I fit I am. Um, some sockets for the RAM and we, uh, put the, we populate it with the chips, they'll probably actually work now. I'm not going to do that quite for this, uh, this video, this video we'll just see how far we can go with this board. And we're not going to leave these as 16k anyway, it's daft. Um, the ones that I do get working and finish off, I'm going to upgrade to 64k anyway and we will do a video on um, doing the 64k upgrade on these because it is actually fairly simple. It's not, it's a, very very similar to the 64k upgrade done on the old um, Atari 600 actually, the 600XL. It's a very very similar principle, basically uh, we fit the chips and we connect up some unused address lines and uh, Bob's your uncle, we've then got 64k of RAM in the computer. Right, I'll power that off for a sec. I will grab a keyboard. In fact, I will grab my... Um... I'll get you back down onto uh, where we're working. Ooh. Oh, let's um, zoom you out a bit as well so you can actually see what we're doing. Um, I've got the old um, SD to IEC that we was fiddling with. I'm sure you saw that on uh, my previous video. And I've got a card in there 
which is absolutely full of um, C16 software. So hopefully um, that's connected up like that and what we need to do, we need this needs 5 volts now it would normally plug into the cassette player connector like that of the um, C64 obviously this doesn't have one and I haven't got an adapter about at the moment that goes from the uh, C16's cassette port to a C64 there is a little adapter you can get for that but we don't need it um, all we need is 5 volts so if I grab a if I grab a cro oops if I grab a crocodile clip basically uh, this resistor here that side of it we've got 5 volts because that is connected exactly the same place as the um, output from the 7805 there so if we clip our um, crocodile clip lead on there we then clip that to the 5 volts in on the um, edge connector here that will allow us to power up the SD to IEC um, through the C16. So that's good like that. We also need a keyboard. You know, like I did uh, mention this on the other video. Um, this is one of the keyboards. It's the keyboard that actually had the escape key. Can you see that? Yeah, you can see that well enough, can't you? It's the actual one that had the escape key stuck down. And the keyboard was dead. The whole, the whole reason the keyboard was dead is because that key was actually glued down, it was pressed down um, permanently so I, I got my old, um, that plunger's knackered, it will need to, I will have to replace it with one out of one of the um, scrap keyboards. But basically I got my tool like that, I got it in there, granched it round a bit and pulled and I managed to pull it back up. So um, yeah we haven't got, a, well escape does work but if you push it down it sticks obviously it is knackered that it's got glue that's gone soaked down into it but it does mean we can use the uh, basically use the keyboard now so I'll get this keyboard connected up to the uh, connected up to the main board just like that so we now have a working keyboard we've got the main board and hopefully we've got a um, SD to IEC which is going to work so let's uh, switch on Now the SD to IC did indeed um, seem to power up then because I got a, um, a flash off the LEDs from it. Right, so, where's my, uh, first things first, let's just take, take, do the um, usual and just type a basic program, just make sure it's going to work. Shift's not so good on this. Oh no. Yeah, I don't think. Yeah, I mean, obviously, I'm going to have to sort this keyboard out because it does have a few sticky keys. There we go. So we can see the computer basically. Oh, you're not even seeing that, are you? <laughs> you can see the computer does actually basically work. Um, I will have to reset it, obviously, because I don't have an escape key. I think our um, on this particular one, I think our reset button's a bit um, iffy as well. There's still got plenty of things to do on these. Hopefully, something's going to come back. Some reason it's not um, it's not coming back on again now. Hmm. What have I done wrong? I got that reset button stuck in or something. Well, this is typical, isn't it? So do bear in mind that we do still have some issues. And that seems to have killed itself again. That's fun, isn't it? Because that, that was working. Let's just make sure everything's well seated. Hmm. Now that seems to have died again. I wonder why that's died again.
Well, folks, you know, you try and do one of these things, and uh, this is sometimes what happens. You think you've fixed it. You think you've sorted the fault out. Nope, something definitely seems to have um, gone awry there. I, I'm wondering with one of them RAM chips. Them RAM chips basically are dead. Uh, I think they've been fried. I have a feeling that they've been over voltage because as we've seen we've had to replace a few of the 7805s on these. And sometimes this will happen. You know, you'll, a, a chip will be on its um, dying death. And uh, in fact, what we'll do, just as a quick, as a quick aside, let's get back on this computer. I'm going to pull the RAM out of this um, C16, which is obviously just. I mean, you've just seen the computer working. I mean, it's obviously it's just decided not to. And I bet you any money one of these RAM chips has gone. So I'm just going to whip these RAM chips out. Fact, let's put the. Uh, Old anti-static on scenery I'm going to be handling them. Should have done that before when I was messing with the tester, but right, out you come. Come on you little bugger. This is the first one. Let's bang that in the tester. Oops. Make sure it's in the right hole. There we go. Let's do a quick test. So let's test device. Now that seems okay, that's done exactly a lot like um, I showed with the other one. 0 0.00000. So let's pull that back out and stick that back in the uh, we'll stick that back in the C16. And let's pull the other one out. I'm just interested in it literally just stopped working like that. Now it could be something to do with like the uh, SD2IEC or the keyboard even, but I doubt it. I think much more likely one of these RAM chips has um, stopped working. Let's test this one. Nope, they're both testing exactly as the good one, so that's a bit that's a bit worrying. That means that something else on this. Uh, on this board has died. Let's, uh, let's take you back over here. I've stuck them back in the board. And we'll stick you back on the screen. And I'll just give it another try. Ah, oh, and now it works. So I think. <laughs> I honestly think we still have some major issues with this board. It's not 100% reliable, but let's see if we can get it to perhaps uh, read something from that um, SD to IEC. So, we should be able to use this command. We should be able to use load, comma, oops wrong button. Star. We can use the star command because the way I've set this little SD card up is the only file browser in the um, source directory is for the C16. So um, this basically, this command says basically load whatever's on the um, source directory. So it should load the file browser for the C16 if it's going to work. So there we go. Then we want comma 8 because that's the disk drive. So comma 8. Enter. And this is what we had last time I tried this. Um, searching for, and it says device not present. So it's not actually seeing the, um, it's not seeing the SD to IEC. I'm just wondering actually, I might just quickly try a different TED. I do, I do fortunately have quite a few TEDs. Well, not a few, not loads, but I do have more than, um, more than most people that have a C16. Grab my, uh, grab my, my chip collection. I'll switch off. So, as you, like I said, as you said, it is still temperamental. Let's uh, put the old anti-static on, and we're going to be touching TEDs. And we'll take the TED out of here. It could be that this. I mean. When I say that these TEDs are tested, they've been fired up in a board, they've not been 
extensively tested. So it could be that this does have issues, this TED. Which would be a shame. But we can prove that by sticking another one in. And like I say, if this one um, allows us to load from the SD to IEC, then it might be that that TED has got an issue. I'll stick another one in. There we go. Let's try it again. And that's not switching on again. Hmm. Let's try moving over to the uh, head we've just taken out. This is the problem with these ICs. They're so fragile and they're so uh, hard to get replacements for. It really is a bit of a bugger with this computer. I so said the CPU isn't the issue it used to be but certainly the um, the TEDs the TEDs are let's put that back in let's see if it's going to switch on no it's doing that thing again it's a really odd fault this. But we've we've proved that basically I think this may be a board fault. I think we've proved basically that our main ICs are good. Um I'll put that TED back in there until we've actually um ascertained we've got a stable board. Because that just isn't firing up again now. Let's try dis. Let's just try disconnecting the um, SD to IEC. Oops, that's the video. That's not SD to IEC. Let's try uh, disconnecting SD to IEC completely. Switching on. Oh, yeah, that's firing up. Hmm, that's not good. Right, let's try that other TED. What are you looking at at the moment? You're looking at the screen, which is rather boring. Let's get you down onto uh, what we're doing. Oops. Let's whip the um, whip this TED out. No, let's just just double check. Yeah, there's definitely something um, still awry with this. We go back up onto the screen. Now you've just seen this fire up. I've not changed the TED yet, and now it's. Um, not displaying again. And this is most odd. Because all by the RAM obviously which um, we haven't tested in the plus four. The PLA that's a point. I've got another P I've got another um, C sixteen PLA here. I could try that in here and see if that might be the issue. It could be that we've got a bad PLA, which would be a shame because I mean I've literally only got one spare PLA which is the one I've got in here um, which is the um, that one there that is a C16 PLA I've got I'll just uh, extract it off my uh, foam here out you come And we'll try that other PLA on this thing. Let's get you back down on here so you can see what's happening. So we've got a replacement PLA. Because, you see now it's fired back up. We've left it a minute and it has actually fired straight back up again. It's most, most odd this thing. Let's try. and I've switched it off. Let's try it again. Yeah, I've switched it off and I've switched it back on, and again we're back to black screen. Now, I know from C64s, um, failing PLAs can give you all kinds of weird and wonderful issues like this. So I'm wondering whether the issue actually is the PLA. And that PLA there is... is failing. No, 
it goes in that way like that. Let's try this this PLA that I've got here. Which I, I believe I have tested in the past, but I believe a very, very long time ago. Switch on. And it does fire up. It does definitely fire up. Um, ignore the... Uh, I'll bring you onto the screen. Ignore the fact it's jittering. That is my monitor that causes that. I'll switch off. Switch back on. No, it's back to doing that. It is back to um, just giving the black screen. I wonder if we try a different processor. I'm literally going through process of elimination here, but I can't see why it would be the um, why it would be the processor actually being that it fires up every time when I put that on the uh, plus four. Let's. I think I've got one more um, suitable processor. Um, eight five oh ones. I think that there is my only other um, my only other working one, unfortunately. That with the dirty great big heatsink stuck on it. Let's try installing that and see if that makes any difference. There we go. Let's try switching on again. And that's exactly the same. Yep, exactly the same that. Let's try it again. So again we're getting absolutely nothing. Just quickly try swapping back to the other um, processor. I'm clutching at straws a little bit here. Put the other CPU back in. Because we can see when the computer is actually working, you know, it will compute, it will execute commands. It's just the fact that it's gone very, very um, intermittent. Sometimes it'll fire up, other times it won't. That is not firing up at all again now. Let's uh, I'll get you back down on here. Let's just try unplugging the um, SD to IEC again. And see if that makes any difference. Mm, oops, no, nope, that was daft. I just unplugged the monitor, you stupid sod. There we go. I'd already unplugged the SD to IEC, so that wasn't it. And we're back to working again, it's fired back up again. It's literally though, I don't know. I've tried to, I mean, we have got some, um, some, I love faults like this that don't make any sense. It's nice when you have a fault when you actually go through some ICs and you actually find out what's wrong. Uh, we're not having that in this instance. Like I said, we're having some rather, uh, some rather unusual faults. Now it's actually working again. Let's um, switch off. At least that proves that that other PLA is good. Or at least that other PLA is firing up. We we'll switch it on back again and again. Nothing. So it'll fire up. You fiddle with it. Um, so you it fire up, it'll work. Or at least it'll work so that you can type a basic program and then that will run. Um, we can't get the SD to IEC to seem to um, read at the moment, but when you switch off and switch back on, it seems to um, not boot up. If you leave it a little while, it does. We look there, we switched it off and back on after a while, and it's fired back up again. And most odd faultless. Most odd indeed. Oops, it's not moving, not moving over. Just, uh, Put that somewhere where it's not going to cause any issues. Hmm, that is most, most odd. And again, let's just make sure it is. Yep. Yeah. Oh, 
I mean, it's not it's not exactly taxing the computer or software like that. But if there was a major issue, I honestly wouldn't expect even that to work. Let's try switching it off and see if it actually fires back up again. Let's we'll switch off. Switch on. And again, it's back to this. It's back to its um, its blank screen. I may have to get the scope out. We may what we may actually have is a um, a reset problem here. I'm wondering whether it perhaps it could be a capacitor issue. Uh, basically, you have you get a reset line on um, these computers like this. And it's usually it's usually involves one of the capacitors. Um, that basically it, it cycles and then it resets the processor. And if that's not working, it could get basically get stuck. Let's try it. It's been off for a minute. I said no again. It's not. Um, it's not behaving again. Let's, uh, let's try connecting the SD to IEC again. And no, it's now decided again. Oh no, there we go. It's fired up. Now we've got the SD to IEC connected. And we've got it to fire up. It's got a different PLA in it this time. So let's see whether... Um, Let's see if that's made any different. In fact, we've got a different TED in at the moment, haven't we? I think I've replaced the TED as well. Uh, it's got the original CPU in it. It's got um, an alternative TED in it, and um, we've changed the PLA. So let's try it again. No, that's exactly the same, searching for star, which is the search for anything, um, device not present. So it's not seeing the disk drive, which will, you know, it will be a disk drive, or um, the SD2IC is just a disk drive emulator. So it can't see that. And that's with a different PLA in there. Um, most odd indeed. And again, you have a switch off. Try switching back on. And again, it, um, it freezes, we just get, uh, there is something actually on screen there, you can see, I don't know if you can see on the camera, but you can see lines coming down, so the TED's running, the video process is actually running, it's just not seeing anything. So I wonder if it is uh, like a CPU reset issue or something like that. Because if I leave it, if I fiddle with it, or if I faff with it, eventually, um, it does seem to fire back up again. Again, it's not doing now, it's just stuck in that. I wonder if I disconnect the power. I wonder if that does it. And that resets it. Can't see why. I think it may be capacitor related. No, it's not firing up again. Anyway, it was just going to be a quick little update on this. And I'm sure I've gone on far, far longer than um, I was meant to. Yes, I have. I was only meant to be doing like 15 minutes just as a quick update on this. But... <laughs> These things, um, these things always, uh, always throw up more problems than you're um, initially going to suspect. So uh, at least we've proved we've got some working RAM, and we've got a, uh, we've got a way of testing the RAM as well. I will look at writing a proper profile for um, these um, 4416s rather than um, guessing it with the um, 4464. Um, profile that we're using at the moment anyway i'm going to leave it there for now hopefully in the next video what we may do is take one of these boards and recap it and see if that makes any difference like I said, i'm pretty sure that the main ic's are actually working i also wouldn't be able to execute a basic program like that and it run it's i, I am starting to suspect possibly now capacitor problems um it's pure for the fact that it's got that very uh very intermittent reset. Like I said, sometimes it will fire up, other times it won't fire up. And in fact, well, no, it's been switched off a little bit. Let's give it another quick try. Say, so fire straight up if you leave it a little while. Um, I'm wondering if there's some charge on something that has to drain away before it um, before it can reset properly. Anyway, I'm going to leave it there for now. Um, so this video has already dragged on too long. So in the next one, we'll probably have a look at um, doing some of the capacitors and see if that makes um, 
makes any improvement. So, uh, hope you enjoyed that little upgrade update on this project. So, uh, thanks for watching and goodbye.